honor to have opportunity to discuss um, Professor Chen and Professor Lucas' um, presentation. Let me share my slides. Could you see my slide? Yes, perfect. Okay, um, that's great. So um, I think both uh, Long and um, Mike have mentioned the situation that platforms can find new opportunities to create a value and generate win-win outcomes. This could be Alibaba's um, digital information structure that helps sellers and buyers. It could be the information structure Mike mentioned that help um, some people to find black owned businesses and that could be beneficial to both sides. I think these are um, relatively easy cases. Um, the more difficult cases are the situation where there might be winners and the losers. Um, I want to give you three examples from my own research and my own observation of business practices. The first challenge is that a platform policy could benefit some users but hurt others. Let me give you example from Airbnb. So we know Airbnb guests um, are concerned about neighborhood safety. And if they see a review about the listing um, that mentions about neighborhood safety, especially in negative ways, they're going to respond negatively by either avoid booking in that listing or demand a lower price. Um, however, we know reviews could be subjective and listings in riskier neighborhoods cannot change neighborhood safety by themselves. Statistically, listings in low-income and minority neighborhoods are more likely to have negative safety reviews, and official crime statistics are higher in low-income and minority neighborhoods. So if you put all these together, the platforms sort of face a tricky situation. If they try to highlight safety reviews, that would help guests, but potentially hurt low-income and minority hosts. However, if they try to remove or downplay safety reviews, it could help low-income minority hosts, but may hurt guests and also hurt other hosts who um, happen to be located in safer neighborhood. So um, the question is, how shall the platform balance the two when there are both winners and losers? Or should we think platform have the responsibility to choose such a balance to choose who is a winner, who is a loser. Uh, I don't see obvious um, solution to this. I'm, I'm just putting this forward to make everybody um, think this as a potential challenge in practice. The second challenge I see is, we know in many markets, um, the digital platforms have replaced part of traditional business. E-commerce may have replaced some of the traditional retail, rice sharing may have replaced some traditional taxi, and house sharing have replaced some hotel services. Then the question is, to what extent should those platforms be responsible for these displaced businesses? Of course, if the platforms win the competition by unfair competition, antitrust authorities should chime in and enforce. But what if the platform win by efficiency? Should they still be responsible for those displaced businesses? If the answer is no, what about the workers in those displaced businesses? Should the platforms try to provide some professional trainings or donate some help for rebuild of the community or even pay higher tax so that the other departments of the society can um, do that function. So this is a second challenge I see. The third challenge I think already mentioned by um, presenters in the last session, should the platform be responsible for bad players that abuse platforms? We have seen many forms of abuse this could be unintentional from the platform's perspective. However, some platform services do facilitate those bad play. It could be long distance financial fraud between strangers. It could be um, creation distribution of misinformation. And we also see um, cases like cyber bully or sex trafficking and um, cyber addiction. So some of the bad plays already um, sort of entailed some regulatory approach. For example, in the US, as Professor Yo has mentioned, they and um, Section 230 have carved out um, for sex trafficking, but still discussing on other um, issues. So this begs the question, should the platform be responsible for the bad play itself? or should they only be responsible for monitoring and policing the bad play? And to what extent should they be responsible on those policing function? Where is the boundary? So just coming back to Professor um, Chen's mentioning about the principles, 
The first principle uh, Long has mentioned is the design of responsibility should be based on how a platform creates value. Um, I think I totally agree. The key question is how we define and weight the value to different parties. As I mentioned before, there could be winners and losers. Different party may have different value from the platform and some may get negative value on that. How can we um, define overall value with appropriate weights? The second principle Long mentioned is from shared value and that should provide a guidance for shared responsibility. Um, I think the question um, I'm posing here is, should the responsibility be proportional to the value that eventually accrue to different stakeholders or to the marginal value that a party enables to create to the whole society, even if that value does not necessarily accrue to the party, but it's enabled by the party, including externalities. I think Marshall have already have some thoughts on this. And the third one is, the allocation of responsibility should be shared in an efficient and fair way. I think this definitely is a laudable goal. The key question is how are we going to define efficiency and fairness, especially uh, what if they conflict with each other, at least in some people's mind. So I think these are uh, open questions. I hope um, the discussion of the group and maybe in the next session as well will shed light on these, um, on these questions. So I'm going to stop sharing my slide. Um, Okay. Um, does anybody have any um, question about this section about the the practice we have observed in digital platforms and digital platform designs? Okay. Um, if not, let's move on to the next section. Uh, many speakers have mentioned European regulatory um, framework, and clearly, I think Europe has been in the leading of sinking potential regulations and um, guardrails for digital platforms. So um, let's welcome um, Professor Jack Kramer um, from Toulouse School of Economics. Professor Kramer has um, done extensive work in organizational theory and the economics of digital platforms. And he was a special advisor to um, European Commissioner uh, Baxter, um, from 2016 to 2019. We also lead the um, policy report from European Commission on Digital Competition. So we uh, really welcome Professor Kramer to share his thoughts. Um, thank Talk. you very much, 